Hi guys, Togo here with a new video and this video will be a Holy Paladin PvP guide video for Season 3 of Dragonflight and we are going to talk about stats, embellishments, we're going to talk about the tier set which Again, spoiler, if you're not going for tier set, you're pretty much trolling, but also there, it's not worth to play and pick it up before you have the four set. While Retribution Paladin, they don't need four set, so again, if you play both spec, you will have to make a choice, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going to talk about one build with a few iterations, and in a probably a future video, we're going to talk about a second build, which is not really meta, and I need to test way more to see if it's going to be good or not. Um, but I won't talk about it as well. Uh, we are going to talk about the comps that you can go for, the place in Soul Shuffle, but also just in general the rotations about your healing, what CG you should use directly, are you not going to use it directly, do you want to pop off directly, I'm going to talk about it at the end of the video. But before we start, let's talk about Holy Paladin. What is Holy Paladin? Holy Paladin is a passive healer that can be played very aggressively. Uh, first and foremost, you do want to understand that your healing is good, but it is not Resto Druid's good. It can overheal someone, most likely, but at one point, if you're playing versus a big MS, or you're playing without any CDs, or you're facing versus double casters, which is quite common, to be honest, but also, like, your buffs are useless, so you have to play accordingly, and you need to cast a lot in general to be very mana efficient the issue with that is if you are casting a lot you're also getting kicked a lot so you have to again play around your strength trying to uh, bait out some kicks if preferred whenever everyone is full hp try to bait it out with a repentance for example instead of like trying to do it whenever someone is low because that is a guaranteed kill for example but let's talk about the stats right now I am running, I think, not really the meta thing, but I do appreciate it a lot because it depends on the comps that you're facing and playing. I also play threes, and I feel like mastery is a great pickup. We have a lot of haste, unfortunately, but that will be lower if I'm going for the uh, better pieces uh, at one point. But um, we have a lot of haste. We have a lot of mastery. We should get a bit more crit and we have like generally enough versatility now my mastery is fantastic because of the increased healing that you get because of the proximity of your target but also it works because of the uh, build and the talent which works with beacons so if the both of be both beacons are next to each other you will have more healing uh, on those targets again it's less effective whenever you're playing with casters but again, in threes, you can choose whoever you're fa facing and are with. And in Soul Shuffle, it's a bit different. But sometimes you don't want to be like super far away as a Holy Paladin because you can actually avoid a lot of CC by just being that in the o AoE. Of course, you're a very easy target if you're doing so. So you have to understand the matchups and when to actually play very defensively and when to play like very pushy. Uh, but again, I will be explaining on the uh, last section. Um, mastery I'm going for and normally you should go for crit as second and then I would say even verse uh, Verse it can be a bit lower than 30% it could be 28% But 30% uh, is the go-to verse that you should go for you can also compensate it with like a uh, room like uh, with gems if you want to But uh, you have ways to compensate it, but it really depends uh, Haste is interesting because you do get it from the four set. I'm going to talk about the four set really quickly afterward. Uh, but uh, haste is great because again, flash of light, you do um, cast it a lot. Holy lights whenever you can, but again, you're getting kicked a lot of a lot of the times, so um, you have to fake it. And it's a good spell to fake like kicks, but again, it's. It's a mana efficient healing process, but it's 2 second cost, while Flash of Light, it's a 1.2 second cost because of the haste that we get. So again, it depends on how you, you play. Personally, I like haste. I know that crit is way more mana efficient, but sometimes games are not like ending me with like zero mana. So it depends on the comps that you're playing in threes or in twos. And in Soul Shuffle, most likely you still have mana at the end of the game because it, it is very bursty, but uh, we'll have to see. So those are the stats. Four sets. Uh, this, the two set is 
okay um like for example in this game again i don't know if i won or not but um the the, the two set did 5.8 percent of healing which is interesting but don't forget you get also a lot of overheal unfortunately so it's not really the most efficient healing but it's still like extra healing you get from things that you always do like for example uh, refreshing a uh, glimmer of light or like dissipating it because of your a uh, swap of uh, glimmer of lights uh, it also does some okay damage again depends um, if you're playing aggressive or not like it did, it did like 4.8 percent of my damage which is only 18 percent it's not going to kill anyone like 1000 it's not going to do anything but um again it's there if you uh, so desire um and then we have the four set which is in my opinion the thing that makes it way better for holy paladins uh daybreak now increases 12 percent for six seconds so that is uh half in pvp but also its cooldown is reduced by 7.5 seconds which is seven seconds because uh, again uh, the, the half half seconds doesn't really exist in gcd like in um world of warcraft or at least like you you don't notice um which is still something seven seconds is like big it like sometimes you're, you're relying on your daybreak to just win a game or be safe or like save a game if you don't have daybreak whenever you can and need to um, it can be devastating and you will have to flash off light probably a lot to compensate it which means that you're going to get oom um, but again you have tools to actually like compensate and try to wait out for a daybreak but i'm going to talk about it again on the build section but also on the end of the uh, video um, again i will reiterate if you're not playing with forset you're kind of trolling but also you're going to feel very weak. Holy Paladin, I think, kinda has a game-changing foresight. This will make you feel way better with Haste, because Haste is interesting on Holy Paladin, but unfortunately you have like two other stats that are way more interesting. But having more Haste means, means that you have more GCDs, means you have more possibilities, means in general people are not going to die whenever you're going to do a Daybreak. Um, so that's the good thing. Um, the pieces that you should go for, again, depends on what, if you have choice or not, but you can always swap them out once you have enough conquest. But um, I go for my pawns because it is versatility crit. We have haste mastery on the hands, which is mastery pretty much, but haste is also always welcome. We have haste versatility, versatility on chest. Again, it's not the best stats, but I felt like it was a good stat. I also I play retribution plugin, so... I kind of find a way to, to have good stats on all my pieces for both specs. And that's why crit is not really that interesting for me to start off. But again, once we have more conquest, I will be optimizing my gear well, be way, way better. Uh, we have verse mastery on the shoulders with the precog, which is important as a um, holy paladin, may I say. We have haste mastery neck. Again, I am someone that is trying to min-max stats, and I don't want to have like a lot of versatility, I want to have the just amount, and that's why I, I chose to go for Haste Mastery, because again, it makes my, my gameplay more smooth for my Retribution Paladin, but also for my Holy Paladin, and I really like it, and I compensated with 70 Mastery and 33 Critical Strike, and then we have Haste Mastery on the head, again, a great piece for Retribution, but also a great piece for Holy Paladin, in my opinion, I like Haste, unfortunately, Crit is probably be better than haste in most cases so we have uh, those um, pieces we still want uh, an embellishment and I would go for metal um, I know it's not like a popular pick for holy paladins but let me explain I'm someone that is very aggressive I try to go for my hammer of justice or repentance and again having a boost on your spell power as a holy paladin is actually a great thing because you will have more throughput but also more oomph whenever you want to actually finish off a target and trust me you can finish off targets with denounce with your hammer of wrath and even daybreak with a holy shock can actually dish out like some disgusting amount of damage in that short period of time unfortunately holy paladin has to choose between healing and dps which is unfortunately on your best city which is daybreak so you have to choose wisely sometimes you're going to greed and it's not going to pay off and you're going to lose or sometimes you're going to greed and get a payoff which will land in a killing blow which again in soul shuffle if you land the killing blow it is done the game is over so 
if you can do that, just do that. But if you want to play like defensively, which I understand, you can also play like this. And metal will still help because you still want to go for a repentance and you still want to optimize your hard. If it's not on a DPS or a healer, it doesn't really matter. I prefer to do it on a healer, but if you can do it on a DPS and you have some dispel protection, it can land also some sweet kills. For example, if you're playing with an affliction warlock and you're harging the DPS and they dispel that, it's pretty much GG's for the healer if he is very low. So Again, it can bait out a few things. You can also just hush the, the healer, but again, it really depends on situations. A rebuke, it's a majestic ability. So if you can actually try to play like super close to the Destruction Warlock, for example, if you're playing versus Destruction Warlock, it can help out a lot. Uh, I gave a lot of tips on this like, like section, but again, if you want to have more tips, you will have it on the latter part of the video. Now let's talk about builds. And uh, I have like not the most common builds, I would say, but I'm going to explain why I do a few certain things. Um, on my class tree, you may see that I take Cavalier. I also take Seasoned War Horse. Um, I understand that people uh, don't like to play with Seasoned War Horse and they don't like to play Cavalier. But trust me, if you want to land a Hodge and you don't have a like a Divine Seed, it is nearly impossible to get a Hodge off. Like, especially on the rest of the road that knows how to um, use his mobility or a Disc Priest with his like feathers or whatever. And then he has, they have Fade, so again, it's also very hard. Or for example, Restoration to the Shaman that can actually just like get you away with a static field totem or like ground totem again you can like sneak it in but Cav cavalier and like divine like season war horse kind of helps i understand that you could just remove those two points and put it somewhere else but i think personally as a um holy paladin you don't really have great choices like you have for example more damage on judgment which to be honest, it's like such a little like amount of damage you gain, but also improved blessing of protection in Soul Shuffle doesn't help you at all because what are the likelihood that you will have another bop in a four minute game? The game is not going to last that long, so it doesn't really matter. Um, after image is useless, the amount of healing you can get. Golden Path is useless because you don't want to like cause Consecration, although it doesn't cost mana. It's not something I like to cost anyways. Um, Again, punishment, useless. You don't really want to do increased damage with Crusader Strike. Unfortunately, Light Force Blessing, if you take those two points, it is not enough healing. If it was like 3% or 5%, it could be nice, but it is not. Um, so, again, I think those two points are warranted, in my opinion, because there is nothing else you can take. And if you just remove one point, then you have like another, another point you can put on Judgment of Light, which is, again, very low healing. Or uh, maybe Faith, faith uh, Armor for more armor, but armor is useless in PvP in most situations. So, again, I prefer to play a Seasoned War Horse right now. So, that is my explanation. I can understand that some people... Uh, may feel different. Um, if you're playing versus Demology Warlock and you know what you need to do, like especially in twos, you can actually play with Turn Evil and just like whoosh the Fell Guard away, which can actually like put them off because again, uh, if they want to do a stun, they need the Fell Guard. So you can actually like do a few tricks with that. Uh, but it's a 15 seconds uh, cooldown, it's a 1.2 second cost with the amount of haste I have. So it depends, it really depends. You can just remove one of those two points. Uh, but do, those are the choices you can have on the class tree. And then we have the Holy Paladin spec tree, which is a great spec tree because you can take everything you actually like in PvP. There are a few things that you can consider or change if you want to. Uh, I think the top side is pretty much set in stone, except maybe Tyrion's Devotion, but the amount of extra mana you will get is very low. It's only 5%. Uh, again, 5% of like 250 per, like K mana, it's not going to matter too much. Um, and the Lay on Hands, I think it will be good for trees, but in, in Soul Shuffle, you actually want to use your bobs like directly. And uh, again, I, I feel like it's if, if it was baked in as a um, more like class tree talent, it could be interesting. But since it's a spec tree talent, you have a lot of more choices to make. This is not the point that you can make uh, and to take. Um, here you have a choice between Define Favor and Hand of Divinity. Personally, I don't like a 1.5 minute CD. That's too long for me. And the amount of healing you can do is interesting. But I feel like 
I get way more value on Define Favor. I understand that people don't like to play that because it can be purged, it can be, like, again, kicked. So if you get kicked on, on Flash of Light, too bad, you don't have a great healing. But its cast time is reduced by 30%. If you have a lot of haste like me, it's really close to an instant spell. It's very hard to kick that, by the way. Uh, and mana cost is reduced by 50%. Again, it can be saved, like, live, like life-saving to get Divine Favor, and then to do a Holy Light, which in turn will also give you some mana back. So again, I think, I, whenever you get the Infusion of Light, of course. Uh, you can also have Flash of Light, which is like free, uh, but it depends on the situations, if you want to actually like get a bit of mana, or you want to uh, heal like big heals, it really depends. But um, I, I like Divine Favor. I understand that people play with Under of Divinity, I personally don't really like it, um, I don't know why, I just think it's not that good. Uh, the 50% the, the less mana you, say, you have the same for Divine Favor, it just is instant cast, but you have to still cast it 1.2 seconds. Yes, you can line it and then it just then it's okay, but I don't know, it's a 1.5 minute CD, you only get like one usage in the whole Soul Shuffle match, while Divine Favor often you have like two or three usages, so... Again, I think it depends. Here we have another choice with Blessed Focus. I like I like Blessed Focus. Often or not, I can like lay off hands every single time with your Daybreak, and can also do some increased damage with it on the enemy. Like you can just blow someone up. Um, but the issue is if you're playing versus a rot comp, like for example, an Affliction Warlock, you could actually play with Glimmer of Life, can affect five additional targets, and then you can actually like lay on hands everyone, but for a bit less healing. And you also get more mana back with Daybreak, uh, which I'm going to explain it a bit further. But uh, this is going to be interesting versus Rot Comp and versus someone that is really purely single target. Blessed Focus is going to be the best thing ever. You don't want to have Illumination if you're playing versus, let's say, a Warrior with a DH. He, they can do some AoE, but most likely you're going to uh, overheal someone uh uniquely and you already have the beacon of faith to help you out with like aoe healing so again that is covered uh by way or another here you have a choice with overflowing light or you can just take uh, holy prism holy prism is interesting but i preferred it whenever it was like a four set where the holy prism was really interesting because it gave you holy power but also like a lot of healing but right now holy prism is like two or three percent of my healing it's quite the same as Overflowing Light. And if you're playing with a Blessed Focus, often or not, you're going to exceed the health. So you're going to get a bit of a shield, which can sometimes help with um, stopping some damage or some goes. I really like that. I also play very aggressively. I like Shining Righteous, uh, Righteousness. It adds a lot of damage if you're doing Denounce. Uh, it's even better if you actually cast a lot of Denounce in the game. It's becoming worse whenever you don't get a Denounce off. So if you're not playing with Denounce, just take it off and play with Holy Prism. If you are playing with Denounce, you can take it in and just play with it. Uh, I like that. Um, for the rest, I think everything is quite standard. Uh, there is like another choice here with Reclamation or Barrier Faith. Bar of Faith, I like it, but again, you need to cast a lot of Flash of Light to actually have a great value shield. Um, I think it is good. I don't think it's bad. It is still 6k mana, but I, I like Reclamation because, again, the lower your target is, the more healing it will get, the more damage it will get. I actually like that fact. The refund is not noticeable so you're not taking for the refund you're actually taking it for the increased healing and damage you can get from holy shock it's not like phenomenal but sometimes it will help you to get someone from low hp to mid hp with just a holy shock and a glimmer light a glimmer of light proc i i like that so i do take that i understand that sometimes you want to play with burial of faith I think if you're playing with casters, it's way easier to get it off. But if you're playing with double melee and every single call, like every single sounds will go for you, it's terrible. Like it's it's very hard to get a lot of value for it. You still have a lot of value, but it really depends on your uh, holy shock instead of like your flash of light. Uh, tier of deliverance is like a no-brainer. It's too good. I think it should be nerfed so you can have more choices. But again, I think people will be mad if I'm actually suggesting it. So please keep it like this. Um, Avenging Crusader is not worth it currently. I am still still testing out if it's going to be worth it at some point. But I think the only problem I have is the split among them. 
um, wording. It's like nowhere near as strong as Mistweaver. It's a one minute CD. You cannot reapply it as easily as a Mistweaver, which I think, in my opinion, should be like this, or else you don't have like the the sustained healing you could get with just being aggressive. Um, so for now, we play with Avenging Wrath Might. Unfortunately, it's a two minute CD. Unfortunately, you have nothing that can proc you another Might. But it is what it is. It's a great healing capacity, which, to be honest, you take it, you get a lot of healing, but also a lot of crit, which in turn will get you a lot of infusion of lights. And again, it, it will give you more a reduction on your damage uh, from great judgments, but also more reduced um, mana cost on the flash of light. Um, here, let's talk about Daybreak. I think Daybreak is an interesting talk because you have two ways to get mana from Daybreak. Either you play with Divine Playa, it will be always 24k over 15 seconds, but your healing and damage is decreased by 30%, which is unfortunate. And it can also sometimes cost you a win because of that, because again, dampening plus the Divine Playa, it is really annoying. But uh, if you play with Illumination, you get five additional targets and you get already one target, so it means you have six targets. If you're doing one Daybreak, it's 2k times six, which is 12k guaranteed without the 30%. Divine Player is good because, it, again, it makes you like... You, nobody can play Dampening versus you purely on mana. But people will still play Dampening on you because, again, Divine player if they know how to push you whenever you have that it becomes very hard to actually just get some healing off so it's not that ideal uh, but rising sunlight again the best talent you can have on this uh, class uh, spec tree let's talk about pvp talents really quickly we have denounce which i play most of my games we have searing glare which i also play in most of my games and i have blessed hands which i do also play in most of my games if i do play versus a double caster and let's say there is no mage so for example destruction warlock or uh, a shadow priest or like a combination of both uh, i do not play blessed hands because i don't have a lot of value on protection but also have not not a lot of value on freedom freedom is going to be always a sum of value you can just freedom you and your partner or freedom both of your dps the issue is is it warranted for a pvp talent to be used for that and sometimes it is not so you have to play without it again i would not recommend to take it out if you're playing versus a melee for example a warrior dh dk even a dk you get some value on bob not all the value but some value uh bm hunter mm hunter like survival hunter those are like all the great blessed hands um i would say countered counters for you um like like blessed hands counters them but um so th those are the three pvp dons i use most of the time if i do play versus a unholy dk i play with cleanse of the cleanse the week especially if i notice they do play with their diseases this is going to be like massive. If I do notice that they're not doing disease damage, but it's purely the um, build where you're doing a lot of instant damage, it's purely clawing shadows, uh, festering wounds, and your uh, death coil, then I'm not playing with that because it's useless. They're not doing damage because of the bleed, the, the, um, the diseases, but they're doing damage because of um, the instant damage. So I just take it out. But uh, I still have like improved cleanse, which again, if you can just uh, cleanse one target, it's still sometimes enough to uh, diminish their burst. Hollow Grounds is actually interesting, but if you were actually playing like Avenging Crusader and you're playing versus a DK, nobody is slowed basically because of that. But again, difficult right now, you can really play with that. Judgment of the Pure is actually very interesting versus a whole DK as well, but also Shadow Priest. Um, but again, it's going to use a bit of uh, interesting thought with your judgment. So you need to use it at the right time. And sometimes it will be very good. Sometimes it's not going to be very good. So you have to uh, understand the usages. Uh, for example, if you're playing versus a Boomy in it root beams, you can judgment with judgment of the pure to liberate you uh, from the roots. So it will help you, um, but not versus every matchup. But for example, uh, I like to play that versus Boomies. I like to play that versus uh, Destruction Warlocks, for, for example. If I feel like they're going for me, it will cleanse me the Immolate, which is sometimes helping me in most matchups. Um, versus Unholy Decay, of course. 
Um, the, the, you have some matchups where you can have a lot of usage on it. Uh, I would not take it for assassination rooks, for example. The poison effect is not going to be enough uh, to warrant that PvP talent. Uh, Divine player, like I said, it depends on your comp and versus who you're facing. It feels like if it feels like it's very healable, you can take that. If it feels like it's unhealable, if you take that, it will be even more unhealable. So. Um, there is that spreading the spreading the word. I don't like the talent. Unfortunately, it's still there, but they, I wish they put that on the class tree. Divide vision is also an interesting one. Uh, then you would take, uh, for example, protection of the tier, to, uh, protection of tier to get increased healing. Um, but again, again, it's a PvP talent that is not the best, but it's still there. Uh, we have darkness before dawn, which is not that great. It's light of dawn hasn't been great since Shadowlands. Shadowlands was actually very good with Necro Lords. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they didn't really uh, reiterate that um, ability in Dragonflight. Ultimate Sacrifice, for me right now, I don't play that. It's it's The damage is sometimes too big and you have to Divine Shield. But if you're playing in RBGs, often or not, Ultimate Sacrifice is always taken because you will be able to Ultimate Sacrifice the Garden Druid or the DH. And then you can just bubble and you're pretty much like safe. So, uh, like everyone's safe for 6 seconds. But um, in Soul Shuffle, it's not that good. I think it's better to just play with Sacrifice. And that's it. Averaging Light is a meme right now, so don't take it. Uh, so those are the PvP talents and the talents. Again, build will be in the description. Um, let's talk about comps. In twos, I like to play... Um, to be honest, I don't really like to play twos in, as a Holy Paladin. But if you play with twos with a, Holy, with a Holy Paladin, you can play with a BM Hunter, for example. Um, you can play also with a spec that has fear, so for example, Warlock, so you can actually Repentance and you will get a lot of value because it's a Polymorph DR and Fear DR, which is, again, a very long CD chain. If you actually Hammer of Justice and then Repentance and then a Full Fear, it will generally be enough to land a kill if they don't have a Trinket. Um, so, again, play around those comps with a Fear DR or play with a Warrior. Again, it's a bit dampening with a warrior, I'm going to be honest, but you can help him with freedoms, which is actually very big. And you can also just pop the uh, disarm if he's going for a kill and he can land a kill, you can just pop the disarm and it will be fine, for example. Um, but yeah, those are the comps I would go for. You can play very aggressive in two, so just play aggressive. Uh, with their breaks going on the enemy and your denouncers, try to get it off. And Searing Glares at the right time can actually just annihilate a go. For example, if you see a warrior blaze storming, just Searing Glare because they cannot. Generally, warriors are playing with Hurricane, which makes their blaze storm not cancelable. If they do cancel, you know what's up. They don't play with Hurricane, so you can you do not try that again. But if you play with Hurricane, just Searing Glare, and it will just deal way less damage. Try to time the blaze storm. You have some weak auras for that. Personally, I play Warrior, so I know how long it is. Um, but if he's blade storming, do that at the end. So uh, generally, they try to do a more strike or do a big damage at the end because of the hurricane uh, stacks. So try to do that, and it will actually just make you immune to damage. So it's very very strong. Um, it's it's dispellable though, so don't count too much on that. Um, yeah, and Blessing of Summer, always on your allies, I try to do it, like, directly. Um, the uh, Blessing of Autumn is some something that if you get it in the lobby, you press it to go next. It is not that good. It's a 30% faster CD usage. In Soul Shuffle, you will get no value. And I think, to be honest, in Threes, even then, it's also a no value a talent. But you can, like, it's not something you can skip in the lobby. So, if you are in the lobby, you have Blessing of Summon, uh, Autumn, please just cancel it. Anyways, like, I mean, just use it in the lobby, like in the waiting time. Um, what else? What else? What else? Threes, I like to play with casters. I think casters are very strong. Uh, you can play also with, like, again, jungle is also quite nice because you have, like, a fear DR, you have a polymorph DR, you can play blind or you can play wrapped. Um, and generally, they're going for the feral druid that is spamming cyclone, so you can actually, like, cast a lot of stuff. Um, you can also play TSG, so basically Warrior with a DK. That's a bit of a face throw comp. It's very strong. Sometimes it, it will feel weak depending on the comps that you're facing, but it will be good uh, in general. Uh, I would say you could play, again, I think 
a combination of a warrior and a caster with a holy paladin is actually also a very good comp uh, you can also play um, rpp so rogue priest or holy paladin uh, which is insane CC wise. You have Polymorph DR, you have Fear DR, you have Stun DR. It's going to be like a CC dream, pretty much. But you have to play very well with it. And you can bop the Shadow Priest, which in turn will be very grateful for that. Or you can bop the Assassination Rogue, which is going to make them unstoppable with their Death Mark Go. So you can also help them with that. So those, those are the comps I would go for. Again, personally, I prefer costs because I think I get to cost way more. I have more impact. But I understand that some people prefer to play with melees. So again, TSG, I think it's one of the best. Uh, I would not try to do DHDK because it's... Uh, again, they don't have a lot of peels except for darkness. So uh, I don't really like that. But anyways, that's, that's my take. Again, um, in Soul Shuffle, I think... Right now, if I should make a tier list, I think it would be top 2 healer right now. Uh, you see, with the statistics on the meta-analysis video that I made like a few days ago, Holy Paladin is actually catching up Disc Priest and actually overtook uh, Disc Priest at the higher levels. Uh, and it's also like on the way to overtake it on 1800. So again, the more Holy Paladin you will see, the more likely you will see the difference between a Disc Priest and a Holy Paladin. Again, you have counters, You're, you are not immune to counters as a Holy Paladin. I think all the healers have that, for example, Resto Druid hates their life whenever there is a Devastation Evoker doing a Fire Breath and getting all the hots away. So again, you, you, you have some counters, but I personally think you have tools to counter a lot of specs with your Sacrifice, with Double Bob, with your Lay of Hands. Searing Glare at the right time can just annihilate any opportunity for CC or kills. So I think uh, you have ways to uh, win the game for your team. Now, I want to talk about uh, rotation and healing rotation. It's very hard to explain it just with dummies, but... Let me t talk about a few game plans. At the start of the match, you want to always have your beacons uh, on your uh, two DPS. If you feel like you are the target, you have to swap beacons. So what I do is I put a beacon, for example, my control R is the uh, easy beacon to take out. And my um, mouse click 4 is the easy be beacon to uh, stay. So if I feel like this one is rarely the target, I am going to always swap it out on me if they go for me. If they go for the other one, again, just swap it off. Uh, it doesn't cost too much mana, so there is no excuse to swap it off. But uh, you have to have a strategy. You don't want to like confuse beacons. Uh, if he is always a target normally, you just keep that beacon there. And he is like the one that is sometimes targeted, you keep that there. If you are the one that is sometimes targeted, just swap it off. And you will have way more value on your beacons very very important you have to do that at the start of the match often or not i do a tier of the de tier of deliverance i do try to see if they're going in like zug zug or not if they're zug zugging tier of deliverance and you're fine if they are not zug zugging try to do it whenever there is fights because again you don't want to blow a cd just for the giggles although it is a long cd because you can just like have more uh duration on your tier of deliverance because of again uh the talent which is called uh boundless salvation but you have to understand that it is something that you have to play around so do not waste it uh it's very important also, I try to start with Blessing of Sacrifice at the start of the match. If I'm playing versus a rogue, I say to my allies, just go in, don't care about the sap. I try to Blessing of Sacrifice at the last time, so I don't get sapped. If I get sapped, at least it will be broken. And if uh, it is not broken, you will lose the Sacrifice, but you will get in combat. Likely, you will get a blind, but you can sit a blind most likely uh, in current situations. Um, but you have to, again, be careful. You have to go in combat. But Blessing of Sacrifice can actually help you to not get sapped and lose the game from the get-go. Because often or not, trinketing and sap is the worst sin possible scenario for you. So play around that. Um, again, a thing that you should consider is using freedoms pretty like fast. You don't want to like be greedy with it. You have two charges. It is not a problem to lose one charge at the start of the match. Especially for a warrior, if they get rooted, just do it. 
just spend those freedoms to help you try to dispel roots if you want if you can that's very important for me is you want to have uptime you are going to win because of the dps being able to connect if your dps are not connecting you're doing your job wrong as a whole button you have a freedom you have a second freedom and you have cleanse cleanse is something you can press even though there is no cc or hard cc a root is also a cc though you have to understand getting rooted and having to use a cd to get out of root as a uh, dps is a huge loss for the team if you can just use a dispel just do that it's very big you should always do that also don't be greedy on your daybreak if you have like one glimmer on the pvp training dummy I'm going to get in combat so you see the, the, the amount of healing. If I do a glimmer, it's a lot of healing. Like, nobody's... Like, this guy is not going to die. It's a lot of healing. And you, then if you do a Divine Toll with your uh, Daybreak, it's going to Daybreak on everyone, even though you don't have Illumination. So, again, Daybreak into... Day, um, I mean, glim, uh, Divine Toll into Daybreak is massive. Massive. Don't underestimate it. If you do, then again, you're going to sometimes lose matches that you should not lose. You are going to lose matches, guaranteed. I started off very badly in Soul Shuffle. I had like a weird, like a, re a record of 424 or something like this. Like I lost everything. I lost actually the will to play Holy Paladin. And then I understand, look, I need my four sets. So I'm playing with four sets. And I need to understand that I have to use my CDs way more often than, let's say, a Resto Druid. So, again... If you know what to do, you're going to win most matchups. If you are trying to just wing it and to be greedy with your CDs, you're going to lose matchups that you should be able to win in most regards. For example, doing a Blessing of Protection to make your Frost Mage being able to cast is big. You don't want to wait out that they have 10% HP. If you feel like they have Icy Veins and they are like highly stoppable because you have double melee versus you, just press blessing of protection and see them do a full icy vein like a uh, ray of frost icy veins on someone and sometimes it can just win out you out a game again you can don't have to expend your bobs every single time for just the lols but if you can land a kill because you did a bop it's way better than just waiting until your allies are actually on the brink of death because it's very hard to heal someone that is 10 percent hp with 50 percent of dampening even daybreak is not going to full heal someone so play accordingly again there's all, a lot of magic damage also in the game so bob doesn't have like full value even versus like the comps that you should think that there is full value just play around that try to play around your tools again if you want to like play aggressive try to have Let's say a glimmer like the uh, the uh, infusion of light. If you have infusion of light, try to do a judgment on the enemy, so it means that it will have less damage dealt. Seventy two is a lot, so it will prevent a lot of damage. Or if they do a moral strike, it will not hit for two hundred k. That's a guaranteed. So that will help. Uh, again, try to press flash of light whenever you have those infusions. You can have weak auras for that if you have difficulties to uh, to see it. Uh, again, the more crits you have, the better to uh, for the um, infusion of lights. If you want to play aggressive, very simple. You pop your wings, you pop your uh, daybreak, you do a judgment, you do a hammer of wrath, and you can also do denounce. So, again, I'm going to show you really quickly. I do a divine tool, averaging wrath, denounce, daybreak, and then I do my, my rotation with uh, this. And it does a lot of damage, like... This is generally enough to, to kill someone if he's low HP. I did 100k DPS. Now, I'm going to be honest, Gleam of Light is never going to hit for 106k. So forget about it. But if it does 50k, you're going to be very happy. I think generally you're going to have 30k. So you would have, I would say, 300k damage or maybe 250k damage with Gleam of Light. Holy Rever Reverberation is interesting. I also don't think it will hit for that much. But um, it's still going to help. And Holy Shock, that will hit for that amount. So this is, this is a realistic amount. Denounce is going to do around that damage. It will be a bit lower. It will be 50k. And Shining Righteous will, Righteousness will be around 30k, 25k. If it crits, it will do a lot more damage. But you see, the damage potential is there. So you have to play around that. If you're not doing that, 
it's okay, it's fine, you don't have to play aggressive. But trust me, playing aggressive is actually one of the things that actually is very fun for a uh, Holy Paladin. You want to set a focus all the time. I have a focus Hammer of Justice, I have a focus rep re uh, Repentance. And if, if I play versus the Resto Shaman, for example, I try to play very close because they're not going to notice the Rebuke. And Rebuke is a big CC. Again, if you can interrupt a healer for 3 seconds or Destruction Warlock for 3 seconds, it's majestic and then you can just do a, a little uh, hammer of justice and then whenever you have time you do a repentance but unfortunately i cannot do that on a dummy because it is invalid but that cc chain is too big to recover they will have to blow a trinket or they have to blow a big cd for example spirit link if they're a restoration shaman so try to play around that also, if you feel like you have time to like if like it's a if it's a four cost like four four melees trying to rip their throats out, just press searing glare. It will help you for four seconds. It might have a dispel baited. If you see the heal of dispel, it's a direct um, it's a direct hammer of justice. So and again, I need I need to uh, grind that hammer of justice. But if you feel like he dispelled it's a direct time of justice ggs the dps is going to sit that again a dps that is not dpsing is a lot of mana save for you but also a lot of time for the other dpsers on your team to recover and to play aggressive so try to, uh, to play around that hammer of justice should should always go for the healer but again like i said if you see a dispel gone you can just hammer of justice the dps and they will have to trinket or sit that for five seconds so Again, it depends on how you see it. It depends on the positioning of you and your and the, the opponent healer. Uh, I think the one that I really hate to play against is like a preservation evoker because they can have like CC immunity, which for me, again, I'm someone that likes to CC, is a bit disgusting. But um, I would say the second healer I really hate to play against is I cast uh, Mist Weaver because again, they, they can just kite me out most likely for my Hodges. So I have to play aggressive with my repentance, which in turn will also give me a lot of rip, like uh, jukes I have to do to actually not get kicked. Um, let's talk about macros really quickly. So macros, you have a few. For example, you can have a blessing of freedom with target, and then you choose the name of the target. You can also have a party one or party two uh, freedom. Uh, I use both, but uh, it depends on situations again. Um, we have a stance uh, macro uh, between devotion aura and concentration aura so we just have one button to press it's one or the other so I have stance 2 which is the uh, like exclamation point dev devotion aura and then uh, point uh, point um, comma uh, exclamation concentration aura so you have a switch between two. Oh, please do not get deleted and it's very easy to switch out so um, again we try to play very smart out here, uh, try to save a keybind. So, uh, another macro that you should uh, try to get, uh, I think, in my opinion, and it is like uh, a, a target macro for your clans. If you're playing twos, helps, um, but again, depends if you need it or not. Uh, we have a party one, party two, World of Glory, but Again, that is a bit less used for me because I feel like I don't really need it too much. Uh, we have like a one-shot micro with uh, Divine Tool and Avenging Wrath. Uh, we have a focus micro on Hammer of Justice, very important. And we have a Repentance um, focus micro. We have also, we could also have a Rebuke uh, focus micro, but uh, for now I don't really feel like I use it too much because of... Again, I try to rebuke whatever cast I can. Uh, since it is an extra uh, kick, I try to re uh, to rebuke my the DPSers. Try to rebuke the healer. I don't want to be too messed up with the focus macros. In Soul Shuffle, I'm going to say if you're playing versus Night Elf and you feel like your focus macro doesn't work, it is probably because they melted something and your focus macro is like your focus target is gone, so you have to reapply it. Very annoying. I hope Blizzard just changes at one point that you always have that focus at one point, but. Well, at least it, it saves, at, at least for the match, but it is what it is. So those are my tips and tricks. Those are my macros. Those are my builds that I play in whole, as a whole paladin. The stats, embellishments, four set, 
I think I talked about everything. So if you want to ask me anything, you can always ask me in the comment section below. It always, it always is a long guide, but hopefully you did learn something from it. Um, again, Holy Paladin is incredible. I actually enjoy my time uh, in trees and also in social In twos, I have again um, the feel that I really don't like to play twos uh, as a Holy Paladin. I prefer as a rest druid, but again. It's because it's OP probably, um, but right now uh, I concentrate myself on Soul Shuffle and uh, Trees, but again, I play a lot of classes, so I take my time to climb, but it feels like I have agency as a Holy Paladin, and I like to have agency on my wins and losses, uh, and it feels good to have um, a healer that where I can have fun as a healer, but also as someone that can also finish off targets at the end of the match so if you want to watch any of my content you can always subscribe to the channel so you can always never miss a video with a notification bell for example um, let me know if the guide helped you in any way if you are waiting for another guide please be sure to comment below what kind of guide you want, you want to see next I think my next guide will be Shadow Priest because I do play it right now a lot and I want to show um, the World of Warcraft community that it is sleeper good but people are still like right now very much sleeping on Shadow Priest uh, so I wanted to showcase that well as well but again thank you for watching thank you for everything thank you for the support and have a great year first and foremost but also a great day.